travel rosters. Who's going to be traveling with the Gophers team this year? Who are the key players that will produce? That's what we're talking about today. We'll get in depth on what it means, but you got, the guys you got to know, they're coming up next. Hey, you are no locked happens, on Golden Gophers. No matter what we're going to do here, we're just going to keep rowing. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota uh, Golden turns out, Gophers. Whatever turns out, we're just going to keep rowing. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We're just going to keep rowing, keep rowing, and keep rowing. You're listening to Locked On Golden Gophers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Kane Robb, host of the podcast, former collegiate football video coordinator and recruiting assistant here to talk Golden Gophers with you each and every day of the week. Now, I know I'm wearing the same thing from yesterday's episode. No, I'm not grimy. No, I'm not wearing the same thing. I recorded these two episodes back to back. I'll be out of town this weekend, but I wanted to make sure you got your show each and every day of this week. So we had to do it for you. I had to shoot back to back here. Now we're talking travel roster with the Golden Gophers. Be sure to subscribe on YouTube to get more content like this. But I want to dive in right away because we've got a lot to talk about. So right now, we've gone through all the positional breakdowns. We've told you about all the guys on the depth chart and now we want to shoot our shot on who the travel guys will be who will be the players that go to every game that could potentially be called upon to produce that's what we're going to take a shot at now they don't travel until week four at michigan so a lot could change in that time but we're going to take our best guess at who those guys are going to be Now, the Big Ten rules state that you can have 70 players travel to road games um, when it comes to football. In 2018, that was extended to 74, but I believe it was only for that season and has gone back to 70 cents. So that's the number we are working with today. Now, those 70 don't have to be the same every road game. I want to stress that, put that out there. You can change your 70, so it can change every road game you go on. It doesn't matter. But... It has been more difficult with COVID over the last few years. I haven't seen if there's any testing parameters this year when it comes to COVID from the conference that's decided by the conferences, so I haven't seen that. I couldn't tell you if there was going to be or not because it's really hit or miss, especially in today's age right now, the later and further we've gotten into this pandemic, so I don't know about that one. But last season at the D2 level, We would travel on Fridays and we would leave early. Now at the D2 level, we were often taking buses everywhere unless you were going way across country, then maybe you'd fly. But for the most part in your regional play, you were taking bus rides and those could be three hour bus rides. If you were in the NSIC, there's a school in the same town in Sioux Falls. So those maybe have 10 minute bus ride. But uh, overall, you could see a 12-hour bus ride, an 8-hour bus ride. So it was a lot of travel on buses, folks. Now, the travel rosters for us weren't listed until Thursday. And so you would know for sure by after that practice, but after the practice or walkthrough, but Thursday is when the official travel roster would be communicated. Now, Friday, if you were not vaccinated, then you would have to test, and if you popped a positive, then any you and any close contacts had to quarantine for three to five days, and you were taken out. So we could lose key players at the drop of a hat, depending on what those results were, which was insane, but that's also why we would... We would deem a couple players that had been working all week to at least be on call by their phones ready to go in the morning on that Friday morning in case a positive was popped. So that's kind of how that works last year. I don't know if it's the exact same for D1. I don't know what that situation was last year, but hopefully the testing parameters and procedures are a bit more concise and honed in on now that we've gone through two seasons already of this. Now, your travel numbers by position would shift partly due to what type of schemes you run on offense and defense and what positions you may need more of. For example, if you're a heavy round and and pound, heavy 
ground and pound running team, power eye, 12 personnel, like those heavy run looks, you'd probably travel more like five to six running backs over potentially three to four. But in 12, if you were a 12 purse team, heavy 12 purse, lots of two tight end systems, you'd probably travel more like five tight ends instead of three. So that's what I kind of mean by it really depends on the personnel and the scheme that you tend to run. Now, with all that knowledge, we're going to shoot our shot at the Gophers travel roster for this season. With 70 spots, we're going to attribute four of those to special teams. We'll say two kickers, one punter, and a long snapper. So that leaves us with 66 slots to fill. Now, since Coach Rossi has consistently preached that depth and rotation are the key for his defense, we'll split that into 30 for offense and 36 for defense, and we'll lead with the offense coming up next. First, a message from our friends over at Bet Online. Bet Online is where the game starts. They've got the latest trends and actions for you when it comes to betting sports and getting your odds, getting your lines, getting your props. That's where you need to go. You need to go to Bet Online to get the latest odds there. They'll keep you up to date, they'll keep you informed, and honestly, they'll help you. They'll help you get your money. Get your money right. I mean, I mean, they can't tell you what to bet. They can't tell you what to bet, but you can scan through there and find the numbers that stand out to you in order to hopefully make a little side money on the side. Now, before we had talked about how the Gophers over under for score in week one was 55 and a half, something they didn't pass except for twice in the entire season last year. So if that number is still the same, I would definitely check it out, give it a look, but Bet Online keeps you up to date with the latest action in the things happening today. Be sure to head on to Bet Online either from your desktop or from your mobile device. Be sure to check it out, Bet Online, where the game starts. All right, so we're diving in. Today is the off, or not today, the first Thing we'll touch on is the offense uh, talking about quarterbacks they're gonna probably travel three we'll talk about maybe if they get a fourth in there probably not but they'll probably travel three Tanner Morgan Ethan Kelly McManus Cole Kramer you'll see those guys travel for sure you got to have the depth you got to have um, multiple players to either signal but they have coaches that are doing signaling and stuff too so that's not a heavy stressor but to have the depth in case of injury to have uh just someone else out there reading for you and telling you what you're seeing especially since shiraka is usually typically up in the press box um having someone on the field who sees it a different way than what's seen up there just having multiple voices to talk to tanner so that's quarterbacks running backs you'll probably see about five so that's mo ibrahim trey potts bryce williams jordan newbin and then i think zach evans fills out that fifth spot now I think Jordan Newbin will be the fourth back because he's got special teams value that he consistently plays in. And on top of that, I think he's the running fourth running back from what we've seen thus far in camp now. Could Zach overtake him in time? Yes, absolutely. Zach's got the talent to do that. But just from what I've seen in camp and what I've seen in reps and things like that, I do believe Newbin is fourth on the list right now. Could I be wrong? Absolutely. Zach Evans comes in at fifth. I don't know if he'll play outside of one of those first four getting injured and then maybe being forced into it like we saw last year, but I do believe that they want him to be as much involved in the process as possible, absorbing as much information as he can from his vets, and that will likely find him a seat on the plane. Now, wide receivers, I've got seven in there. I've got Chris Ottman bell Dalen Wright, Michael Brown Stevens. I've put a question mark next to Daniel Jackson because we don't know what the injury is and what the timeline is for it. We haven't seen him practice yet, so I've got a question mark next to him. Then I've got Clay Geary for special teams in depth, Quentin Redding for special teams in depth. Both of those guys look like key returners for the special teams units. And then I've got Ike White slash Dino Kaliak Manis. Now, both could punch their ticket if Jackson is injured to the extent that he can't he can't play he can't travel um otherwise it could come down to either similar reasoning as zach evans where you want ike white to be around those vets and absorb everything he can or 
If Dino provides special teams experience and willingness, then he could punch his ticket and get on the field in that manner, as well as being a depth receiver in case any injuries come. He's dude, Dude's got sure hands, so I would not be surprised or be mad at having him travel and be ready to go. But they could possibly not be trying not to burn a red shirt for Ike. Who knows? Those Those are the things that I don't think we know enough details on. Now, I don't think that that would likely be a priority, not burning that red shirt, but it could be a reason. So something to keep an eye on, but I believe seven will travel. Offensive line, I've got 12. I've got 12, but I've got a question mark on the 12th man. I don't know who it could be. It could be Luke Purcell. It could be, who knows? But the 11 that I feel good about traveling are Ariante Erzuri, Axel Rushmeyer, John Michael Schmitz, Chuck Filiaga, Martez Lewis, Those are your supposed starters, in my opinion. Now, Martez might not be the starting right tackle. He might be. It looks like he might have a slight edge over Quinn Carroll, but that said, Quinn Carroll is one of the guys traveling, so you don't need to know that right now, but know that both of them are traveling. J.J. Gaudet, also traveling. Nathan Boat, also traveling. Carter Shaw, also traveling. Tyler Cooper, probably traveling. So that's 10 deep right there. And then I believe Jackson Hunter got a lot of work in the left tackle position prior to um, more decisions being made at the right tackle. So I do believe Jackson Hunter is a guy who could travel and be a depth piece just in case. And then that leaves that 12th man. I think maybe Luke Purcell could fill in there or Ashton Beers. Uh, We saw him work in here and there. So that 12th one I'm not as confident in, but I do believe 12. Tight end, you've got three guys, Brevin Spanford, Jameson Gears, Nick Keller. If they somehow ended up traveling four tight ends, which I don't think will happen, then I'd maybe expect to see either uh, Alvarez or Bierman take that fourth tight end spot. Now, overall, I'm feeling about 90% confident in this besides the old lineman number 11 and 12. And if they do seven wide receivers, I feel fairly decent about it. Or they could do eight and bring both Ike and Dino or even Lamike. So something to keep an eye on. Overall, there is probably going to be a little flexibility, a little wiggle room. But I feel pretty good about that being the 30 guys for sure or most likely going to travel. Now next, let's talk about defense. Thank you for listening to Lockdown Golden Gophers and making us your first listen when it comes to Gopher sports. We're talking a lot of football. Next week, we're going to talk a little bit of basketball and some more football. So I hope you'll stay tuned. I hope you'll follow and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Subscribe on YouTube. We're building that channel. We're catching the Locked On Badgers podcast, which we need to make sure we're right there. So that way, when we battle for the X, we're getting engagements and we're bringing that X home. So overall defense, let's talk about the travel roster. I think this one could be a little bit more of a toss up. But there's more openings, so maybe you don't worry as much about it. Now, on the defensive line, I think we have 11 strong that travel easily, uh, potentially 12. I put 12 for the defensive line. I've got Trill Carter, Kyler Ba, Jalen Logan Redding, Thomas Rush, Gage Keys, Devin Eastern, Austin Booker, Darnell Jeffries, Lorenza Sergers, Danny Strigow, Ja Joyner. Those 11. I would put my name on it that those 11 will be traveling to the tra- the road games. I'd put my name on it. I believe those 11, barring injury, will be out there, and they'll probably all see somewhat of production this season. Now, at the 12th person, I've got Logan Richter listed, but right now he is dealing with injury. I'm hoping it isn't anything too serious, so he'll likely travel. But if he doesn't, I've put Jacob Schuster here while Logan Richter is hurt. At the linebacker position, I've got eight guys. Mariano Sorimarin, Braylon Oliver, Donald Willis, Josh Ani, Derek LeCaptain, Lucas Finnessy, Cody Lindenberg. Those seven, yes, I expect all of them to travel. I expect all of them to play in a capacity. Those seven will travel, will be key guys. Eighth person, I'm not sure. You could put somebody like Maverick Baranowski for a similar reason to what we said about Zach Evans. Or you could put someone like Devin Williams who could find himself into a very valuable special teams role and contributing on the end. Could be something like that. I'm not exactly sure. If I had to take a shot right now, 
I would say Devin Williams is that eighth person. Defensive backs, I've got 12. I've got Justin Wally, T-Time, Ryan Stapp, Michael Dixon, Beanie Bishop, Jordan Howden, Tyler Newbin, Coleman Bryson, Darius Green, Tariq Watson, Jalen Glaze, and Miles Fleming. Now, I feel pretty good about that. I feel pretty consistent about that. Miles Fleming is probably someone that's more special teams in depth just to have. The rest of those guys could see themselves in some production on that DB side of the field. So overall, I feel pretty good about those. Most of those probably will, if not all, will travel. That leaves four spots up to grabs. I just named 32 players on the defense. Four spots up to grabs. That could be anything from young guys that have flashed and showing that same thing as what we saw with Zach Evans, where you want them to really be involved in the entire process and learning from the vets and soaking up like a sponge and being involved in the everyday, everyday day-to-day life. You can see that from maybe Anthony Smith, Hayden Schwartz, Cade McConnell, like see those guys start to fill that, Luther McCoy. Or it could be scout team player of the week, your best scout team players they come with because they earned that plane ticket. It could be Jacob Newth, who you have as another signal caller, uh, another guy that's in there to absorb information, but also be another set of eyes for the quarterback. You could not fill it some weeks you could there's so many different opportunities so there's a lot of flexibility and wiggle room still I do believe that that's what this travel roster looks like overall and I think it's in a good spot I think a lot of those players that travel will at least see some reps in some form or capacity getting experience to our guys across the board the Gophers are going to be deep it's going to be a good season and I am excited for it to start in less than 15 days I hope you're excited too That's going to do it for us on today's episode of the Locked On Golden Gophers. Next week, we're going to dive into interesting combos, fun combos. Um, We're going to talk about the future at quarterback for the Gophers. We're going to talk about can Tyler Newbin and Chris Amon Bell put up numbers like the 2019 receivers that we saw. We're going to talk about that and more starting next week. I can't wait for you to tune in. That's going to do it for us on today's episode. Have a good one. I'll see you next week.